Good morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Uh, this is Roxanne Harris here, the Audacious Wellness Warrior, joined by the awesome uh, Kona Kiss Specialist, Jamie McMillan. And uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Robin will be joining us today. She's driving through the Rockies, and we know how great the signal is there. So if she gets a clear spot, she'll pop on. But uh, guys, I'm so excited. You know what I just realized? I use the word guys a lot. Um, what can I say? I know you're mostly ladies watching, but, you know, guys is my term. So crazy with that. Um, welcome uh, to the day. If you are watching this, it means that you are alive, which is really a great thing because the alternative is actually uh, not better. Um you know, many people, I think we get, you know, so wrapped up in our problems, right? And when we look at our problems, we're really looking at ourselves. You know, we're displacing the world and the people around us and we're going internal and it's the woe is me. But if you woke up this morning, it actually means you have another day to shine, to engage with your life, to make a difference, to laugh, to love, uh, to dream, and uh, to really just be all that God created you to be. And I know, Jeannie, that you are a fan of uh, being all that uh, God, you know, uh, created you to be or trying to do that. So, you know, what does that mean for you when I say, you know, congratulations, you're alive and, you know, welcome to a new day. Like what kind of stirs in your heart and your spirit when you hear that? Well, I love the fact too, like you were just saying, like, you know, when you have problems or you're irritated with someone or something, um, my friend, uh, Juliet always says, you know, it's a mirror. If you're irritated, you know, you need to look at yourself. Why is that person bugging you? What did they say or whatever? Because it's something that you need to work on. But I, so I do love that, but I do believe that God has given us this gift of every day and the people around us and everything else. And so we need to utilize whatever gifts that he's given us. If he's given us this or that, like, let's go heal the world. Let's go help others. Like, how can I make a difference? You know? And, um, you know, I know sometimes I need to recharge, but this, but it's like, hello, we're so blessed. So yes. And when we're feeling good and feeling fantastic, it's, it's, who can I, who can I bless today is honestly what it is. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that women are not good at is actually blessing themselves. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, we're so focused on, you know, everyone else, whether it's a child, our spouse, our mother, our best friend. But what about you? Like, what do you do, you know, for self-care every day that makes you feel, you know, good about you, right? <laughs> about showing up. And, you know, I think this is just something that women have really lost. And it starts the moment that you get married and have kids or you take on a career. It becomes everything else except for you. And then you end up in my clinic and wonder who you are, where you're going, what you're doing. You have no passion. You have no zest for life, no exuberance, no vitality. And you don't even know what makes you happy anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's a sad thing, Jeannie. Like, when I ask women, thousands of women at this point, you know, what do you do that makes you feel alive? What do you do that, you know, gives you so much energy, makes your heart sing, your soul soar, your spirit, you know, fly like the eagles. And most women by the age of 30, no later than 35, draw a complete blank. They have no idea what... Uh, uh, what they do that allows them to experience and feel pleasure in their lives. Oh, well, hundred percent because we forget who we are. I mean, uh, like for me, you know, we were raised on a farm. You help everyone else. You just, you just please everyone. And then my career was the spa industry, just helping others. And, and it wasn't until these last couple of years that I really started to pamper on me as well. But we do, we forget, like even um, it's my 
my town, my everything was okay, Briley, what do you like? What do you like, my son? What do you like? I will do whatever. And then I forgot, oh my gosh, what do I even like? What are what do I even love to do? You know, it's like you forget, you know, I had to evaluate that a few years back of what do I love? But I love helping people and that just kind of falls into it. So it's kind of like a hobby, but also fun too. But it is true. You forget of what you like to do. Like, what is your favorite thing? What what makes you feel alive, Roxanne? What makes you like light up and go, oh my gosh, yay, it's another day. <laughs> so, you know, there's a couple of things. And in my upcoming book, uh, so yes, for those of you who haven't heard, Simon & Schuster is publishing my book. Super excited about that. Uh, I'm not going to give you the date because it's been uh, delayed a little bit. Um, and so it, it, it'll be soon, soon-ish. I'll let you know soon. Um, but a couple of things happened in my life journey. So many people uh, know that I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease after the birth of my fourth child, my son. Uh, way back, I actually got the official diagnosis in 2000. And this, it, this disease in particular... Uh, really robbed a, a lot of my life. The disease actually fuses the spine together and um, many of your joints usually involving the hips, et cetera. And one of the things that used to like fill me up more than anything was dancing. And, uh, you know, just even as a young child, my whole life was about dance. Um, you know, I, I did Ukrainian dancing. I took lessons. I danced competitively. We even danced at, you know, Expo 86 uh, in Vancouver. Yes, I'm really that old. Um, and so, you know, it was a part of our lives. My, my parents danced. They took us to dancing events for like a whole weekend. And I learned all the stuff. It wasn't just, you know, rock and roll and move your body, but legit, like the shotis. And I learned how to square dance. And I learned, you know, like all of these crazy dances. But as my, my body started really falling apart, or should I say sticking itself together, gluing everything together, I couldn't actually dance anymore. And it wasn't just because, you know, um, I couldn't, uh, you know, shake it. Like literally my body was so rigid and I was in so much pain. Like if my kids would be running around and bump into my leg, I would have searing pain, like racing up and down my body, like just wanting to scream. Like it was so horrible. So it came to a point where literally my dancing was standing on the dance floor, you know, just kind of nodding my head and clapping my hands because I literally couldn't do anything else. And, you know, as the, the dance started, you know, being removed from my life, I found that I was uh, more and more sad because I danced all the time. I danced with my kids. My hubby, my Mr. Wonderful, would come home from work every day and I'd already have the music going. I'd have the perfect song already chosen for the day and we'd dance in the kitchen. Right. And not just, you know, me and him, but usually all the kids hanging off of us or, you know, whatever. And so it was like this part of me died and it was even painful for me to be in um, an environment where people were dancing because I felt like, well, woe is me and I can't do that. So I would try to be happy, you know, put on the fake smile and oh yeah, I'm having a great time and clapping, but I was like bawling on the inside. And, you know, I, I want, uh, you know, women to know like, Everybody has something like that. You do. Everyone you have something that moves you like that. So, you know, I, I invested myself more into gardening. I always thought that, you know, gardening was this grace that God had given me. That when I'm in the garden, it's just me in the dirt and God. And, and God talks to me and, you know, I, I get all of these amazing ideas. And when I'm in the garden, like, I could be there all day and never think about anything else, right? And so, similarly, that really stopped happening. I couldn't get on the ground. When I was on the ground, I couldn't get up off the ground. And so, I had this experience, right? But... Over the past number of years, um, you know, God is so good and so faithful and this tenacity of reclaiming my life and living a life of vitality um, led me down just such the most amazing path. I really want to implore women 
that if you have a health concern, please get a team of healthcare providers that partner with you, that understand what you're going through, and that will support your body to move forward. Okay, so no, wait, wait, wait. So knowing, okay, your autoimmune disorder that you ended up having, what is that, the name of that? It's ankylosing spondylitis. Okay. And so it's fusing the spine together. Okay. Now, because you had four kids, obviously your four kids were taking all the nutrients and everything from your body. So your body was robbed of a lot of things, nutrients and glutathione and different stuff like that. So what about, okay. So knowing what you know now, because God had you on this journey for a reason, because look at what you've had a medical practice for what, 16 yeah. years. Yeah. And who are you helping? People like you, people with yep. autoimmune disorders with no hope, they are they are just dead in life. They don't they don't fly with the eagles because they don't even know how to fly anymore. You know, That's so right. how wonderful! And I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but your 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 weakness became your biggest strength. Like now you get to bless all of us. And for me, I'm passionate about helping people, so I'm like, Roxanne, yeah, you have the golden ticket to to help the world. Like, thank you that you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so amazing, you know, and because my philosophy is never give up, you know, there's always got to be a way, you know, way back in 2006, my specialist at the time, there was, you know, I'd been on so many pharmaceutical cocktails, further sabotaging my life, right? When yeah. you're taking these nasty, nasty pharmaceuticals, you are destroying your body. You are destroying your liver. It is making you worse. But there was one miracle drug that I could actually walk. I could pick up my kids. I could walk around the block. The but problem did it, was, did it, numb the, did it go to the root cause or did it numb your oh, nerves? No. You feel of the course, pain? it just makes you feel like, you know, you don't have anything going on. It didn't address yeah. the problem. But in my naivety, you know, in that time in my life, this was like my miracle, right? Yeah. And um, when I'm looking at that, you know, the, the doctor, they actually pulled it from the market because it was killing tens of thousands of people within its very, very short debut window. Tens of thousands of people were having heart attacks and strokes. I had a couple of TIAs on it, but I was like, dude, like, I can walk. Do you not understand this? Yeah. Right. So the day came when she said to me, Roxanne, I can't give this to you anymore. Like it's been banned. It's killing people. Wow. Gave me a grocery bag full of pharmaceutical samples and said, here you go. None of these work for you, but it's all we have. Have a nice life. And literally just discharged me. Like I was no longer a patient. I had my son who was whenever like four at the time with me, uh, four or five. And I looked at him and I was like, are you kidding me? This is actually what she said to me. By the time you are 35 years old, you will be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Good luck. And I was like, what? And in that split second, I had to make a decision. And I said, you know what? No. I looked her in the eye. I said, there is no way in hell I will ever get in that wheelchair. Not now, not ever. And she was a bit, you know, uh, obviously taken back by that comment. But that's when I really started to cry out like, God, you've got to show me. There must be something on this earth that you have created that is going to show me the way. So you know, when you're diagnosed with a disease, you can either roll over yeah. and accept it and go down the path of that disease, believing that these medications are making you well when they are not. They are just keeping you at a state where the symptoms are maybe not as bad or you think they're not as bad, but your insides are being destroyed along the way. Yeah. Or you can make a decision, yeah. right? Yeah. Or you can make a decision that you're going to live, but not live, live well with vitality, with the fullness of life, with the fullness of health. So I started on this mission, right? And I have the most beautiful team now supporting me, but my team is full of medical people that agree with where I want to go. So my team are chiropractors, 
osteopaths, physiotherapists, and yes, even my rheumatologist that believe that my spine can and will unfuse itself. Woo! And so, you know, it, when you ask a medical professional, you know, if your spine is fused together, will that ever heal itself? They will laugh in your face. They will tell you it is not possible. But in the realm of not possible, this is the realm where God shows up, yeah. right? It is possible. Your body is designed to constantly heal, repair, recover, restore, and regenerate itself. Not to regenerate itself in a faulty, disabled, uh, you know, stuck together mess. Well, you have to give your body what your body needs in order. If you're feeding yourself, you know, potato chips with an injury, then that's what's going to heal that injury. So, yes, it might be a mess if you're trying to <laughs> restore and recover that way. But, yes, you have to give your body what your body needs. Right. And so, you know, your your spine regenerates, your bones, your skeleton regenerates itself at a rate of 10% every year. Ooh, so yeah. in 10 years, you actually have a completely new skeleton. All of your bones, your teeth, they're all new. So my thought was, well, if that's the case, why would my body keep producing new bone that's sticking itself together in an erroneous way? Like, that's ridiculous. Why would my body do that? Well, of course, you just said it, Jeannie. Your body's going to do that when you don't give it the tools that it needs yeah. to do it better, to do it correctly, to do it the way that it was designed to. Mm -hmm. And this is what we don't understand, right? And so that was like, okay, so what are these tools, right? And so, you know, long story short, I, I want to let you know. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate, even though, you know, some of you are audio only. But ladies, I went from not being able to dance, right? Just kind of bobbing and clapping my head where I can jump up and wow. down and shake it. And right. it doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> and you feel good. You're not in pain. And I feel fantastic. I haven't been in pain for years. It's a little bit odd because, you know, um, I still move very weird, oddly. So every once in a while, someone will still say something to me like, oh, my gosh, are you okay? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And they're like, yeah, but you're in so much pain. And I'm like, no, I'm not in any pain at all. And they're like, well, you have to be. I mean, look at you. And I'm like, yeah, look at me. I'm freaking amazing. Yeah. Right. I'm amazing. Like right. people that used to know me like 10 or 12 years ago, I was very hunched over, crippled. I walked by throwing my body forward because my right side, my hip was actually fused into the socket. And the doctors didn't know that. Anyways, crazy stuff. But, but we need to know that story sometimes. Some people don't know. They look at you, they look at me, and they think, oh, everything's perfect. And that's why you're so great and happy. No, are you flipping kidding me? There's real raw stuff to this stuff, too, you know? There's real raw stuff. But, you know, like uh, two summers ago, I guess it's summer of 2020, my husband, my Mr. Wonderful, and I decided we we're going to take these online dance lessons because let's just be honest. 2020 was pretty boring. Everything was shut down, right? And, um, you know, so we started taking these dance lessons online and it was horrifying to me because, I mean, it wasn't just a learn how to waltz, but it was stuff like spins and him like picking me up and dipping me. And I'm like, oh my God, like something's going to break and I'm going to like be in, injured for like the rest of my life. And, you know, we w would watch the, the lesson and I would just start laughing and I'd be like, no, we're not doing that. Like, because I laugh when I get really nervous and uh, he's like, uh, well, let's try it. And we'd go to do the movie and I'd be like, no, and I just like freak out. And, you know, there's this one really great move where he spins me into himself and I hold my arms like this. And then literally he puts his um, hands under my arms and slides me like across the floor and i was like dude that seems like a whole lot of dangerous to me and we did it and we asked my daughter to come and watch and as he did that she's like oh! and she like lunges forward because she thought that i was gonna get hurt like to try to like grab me and she's like i can't believe that you actually did that and so 
what I want to say is life is what you make it, all right? Please don't think that because you have a diagnosis that that is your life, right? I am living proof where you can literally be rock bottom, so incapacitated that you can barely move. Guys, I had to get up like two hours early in the morning just to be to work on time because everything took me just so much time because everything was so painful, right? And now like I'm up, I've done my, my workout, my exercises, whatever, all within this very short period of time. Yesterday I was trudging through my whole yard, fixing all of our uh, taps on our maple trees. Right. And I'm like, a couple of years ago, that would have taken me hours because it was just so painful and slow moving. Right. So I'm, I'm back dancing. That is my grace. That is my joy. I dance every, every day. Uh, and if you know me and if you're ever in a meeting or a Zoom with me, we mostly start our meetings with dancing. Very often in the middle of the meeting, we get up and shake it because it really, it helps with our state of mind. When we move our body, um, it changes our state of mind. And it's, please, it's not because you can't. You can if you can only wave your hands in the air, you can do that. If you can only tap your toes, you can do that. But please, you know, we, we have to move. We have to move our body. We have to shake it. And you are the, the captain of your own body, right? You steer the ship of your life and you get to choose the, the, the course, the, the destination. And if you've gotten off course, it can be one degree off course. You know, if you're on an airplane and that airplane sets off one degree off course, by the time it gets to its destination, it can be thousands of miles away from the destination. And some of y'all are living your life a thousand miles off of the destination that you were called to in this life. You just need a little course correct. You need to make a decision mentally, emotionally. Where am I going to show up in my life for me? Okay, so talking about some of these tools in your direction, because you said you have to pick and choose yourself, right? And so there's a lot of different tools that you're used, whether, um, you know, supplements and oils and glutathione and different things and food, uh, water, like you had to make choices. You used to like say that if you ate, you know, wheat or gluten, you would be in so much pain and knowing what foods to eat. Yeah. Um, can you just ramble off a list of some of those tools, you know, because are you on any medication now? No. So I'm on supplements. Um, okay. I'm on, you know, actually, oh, I, I took my morning ones already, but you know, here's my, my supplement container. Can you tell me what you do? Oh yes. Perfect. Wait, go back to the supplements and then let, let, let's help some people because there's a lot of people with autoimmune disorders. And my, my uncle actually just was calling me today about his spine and he's in so much pain and he needs help. And so I'm like, ah, I've got tools, but you got to believe. <laughs> but anyway, so talk to me, tell me yeah. what supplements, tell me your routine. I'm going to so, write this stuff down. Yeah. So let's start with the number one thing is you got to drink the water. In fact, you got to drink all the water. So we are chronically dehydrated in a state of dehydration. Your body can't function. Your body is like 72% water. If you're not replenishing it, your body is not able to cleanse itself, to detoxify itself. Uh, the lymphatic system gets congested, your bowels, your liver, like it's, it's a mess. And if it's not water, it's not water. Yeah. Your tea is not water. Your coffee is not water. Your juice is not water. It's not water. Yeah. And if you're drinking carbonated water, so maybe you buy just the plain water that has maybe some essential oils or something in it, but it's got the bubbly fizzy, that's dehydrating. It's at the, the carbonation shifts the water into a non-healthy uh, water. It's no longer hydrating. So we have to know these things. Half of your body weight in plain water every day. Okay. And, you know, if you're drinking something like coffee or tea, so let's say that I have my Wonder Woman mug today because, guys, I resonate with this so hardcore. Um, but if you're drinking, say this is a, a, a cup of coffee. Well, first of all, this is not a cup of coffee. 
This is two cups of coffee because this is 500 mils. This is two cups. It's not one cup of coffee. Please get real with that when you're telling people how much coffee you're drinking. <laughs> but, but when you're drinking this coffee, right, you have to drink the same amount of water to now be even. Because this On top much, of half of yes, your yes. because this much coffee also eliminates this much water from your body. So you haven't had, if you drink this much coffee and this much water, you haven't had four cups of water. You've had zero. Please you had negative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not with zero. So that's the first thing, right? Get Good. off of these um. I'll say calorie wasting foods. Do you know that most people consume more calories in their beverages than they do in their food? So ladies, if y'all are trying to lose weight, uh, drink water, stop drinking your calories. This is really important. Anyways, then you have to look at your, your diet, what you're eating. Remember that food is not like medicine. Food is is medicine but that. some of the food that you guys are consuming is poison it's not medicine at all it's poison you're you're literally consuming poison for example aspartame uh aspartame is rat poison fyi aspartame turns into formaldehyde in your body and pickles your internal organs do you know that coroners and embalmers say that they actually don't have to preserve bodies because they stay fresh now for 10 days huh. because you are pickled from all the aspartame that you're consuming. And please don't tell me that you just have a little bit because how about I just put a little bit of arsenic or cyanide in your, in your coffee? Poison is poison and it has a cumulative effect in the body. And so I've heard so many people, you know, they start with a natural supplement and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't feel good. You know, that vitamin C made me sick. But maybe it was actually that you hit your max dose of aspartame, right? And that's what happened. Or, you know, you were uh, cleaning your bathroom with some toxic cleaner without wearing gloves and you absorbed all of those toxins in through your skin, into your body. And that's what happened to you. So. You know, there, there's a big dichotomy, but when we look at chronic degenerative disease, when we look at autoimmune disease, your food plan must change. It's not optional. You have to eat your medicine, not your poison. And so we, we adopting um, an anti-inflammatory diet is really what's going to propel you. So what are the foods that are inflammatory? And you're not going to like this. The inflammatory foods are sugar, yes. caffeine, dairy, meat, and every grain known to man, including corn and rice, which are grains. They are not vegetables. Corn is not a vegetable. Rice is technically a grass. However, it has its own gluten component. Please know that a gluten-free diet is not going to help you if you have autoimmune disease. That GF symbol, that little GF gluten-free, it doesn't mean gluten-free. It means gluten-free. It means there's no wheat in this product. Every grain, uh, wheat, rye, oats, barley, spelt, millet, buckwheat, kamut, couscous, amaranth, they all have their own type of gluten. Gluten is extremely inflammatory, at least the gluten that we have in North America. Well, that's why so many people are feeling better when they stop eating, when they're on a gluten-free diet. Even those with autoimmune disorders, they definitely feel better. But like you said, it's not going to fix you. Like it's going to help. Well, and in, in, in part, and where they feel best is the true gluten-free diet, which is a grain-free diet. Yeah. So GF actually means grain-free, uh, not gluten-free. But, you know, in the marketing of our world, right, 
we've decided that gluten-free is no wheat. Did you know that in the 1940s, there was a medical study done with tens of thousands of Crohn's celiac patients, and they actually discovered that if they removed all grains from the diet, the, the, their bowel not only went into remission, but it was fully cured. In 1940, interesting, because only now we're hearing about Crohn's, colitis, celiac, celiac disease and everything. But back then, I never heard, even when I was younger, so to have that study in 1940 and not have it really released very much. That's right. Awesome. And yeah. then in the, in the 1960s, they did a study, a follow-up study with a whopping 10 people. And they found out that if they just removed wheat from the diet, most people generally felt okay. So that glad and free diet was born. So we don't need to take away all the grains. Look, they can still live. They can still, you know, have Rice Krispies and eat their corn on the cob and their tortillas, right? But that's not right. It's why most people, when they go to a gluten-free diet, yeah, maybe they feel some improvement or maybe their bowels kind of settle, but they don't get well. Like if gluten was the problem, if gladin was the problem, removing it should make you well. And it doesn't because your body's still reacting to the other glutens. In fact, most people are even more sensitive to rice and corn than they even are to wheat. And it's because we use so much rice and corn as fillers in so much of our food, right? Or even as sweeteners, right? We've got the rice syrup, the corn syrup, like all of those types of things. So, you know, if people with chronic disease or autoimmune disease would even at the very least, drink all the water and remove all the grains, sugar, and caffeine from their diet, they would feel monumentously better. The challenge is, is that it you can't cheat. You can't be like, no grains for three months, and then I'm going to have like three triscuits. Because those three triscuits will cause inflammation instantaneously. And within, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to be in pain. Because well, your body is in pain too. Like yeah. even when you ate like a couple little crackers, you would instantly feel that pain, which was such a reminder, okay, I cannot have those then. Exactly. And so, you know, maybe some people is not as dramatic, you know, as me. Because many people will feel it first mentally, emotionally, where, you know, they'll have the grains and then all of a sudden they turn into like a witch, right? <laughs> no mood, just, you know, ladies, okay. you know what I'm talking about here. You know, you maybe are not connecting the dots, but you eat something and then all of a sudden you are a capital B on a broomstick and you are like out for it, right? And it's because of what you ate. Yeah. Right. Like, why does this mood like literally come out of nowhere? What we eat has a profound effect because you're feeding all of these crazy little gut bugs and they're talking to the brain and you are misinterpreting the message as, you know, your brain coming up with these ideas when it's really, you know, these microorganisms in your gut. So it takes a very long time to heal the gut you know, one month or three months or six months of a grain-free diet will not heal your gut. You will feel great, but you won't get the fullness of the healing. So if you actually have an autoimmune disease, chronic long-standing degenerative disease, two years before you even attempt you know, a little tortilla chip, right? To allow your body to fully heal, repair, and detoxify. Now, I believe that we can speed that up, right? There are lots of things we can do, stabilizing ourselves mentally, emotionally, moving our body. But I want to bring up, since you mentioned it, Jeannie, I want to bring up yep. a very important thing. When you have autoimmune disease, so the autoimmune disease is the whole scope, guys, if you have arthritis, lupus, fibromyalgia, if you have diabetes, MS, cancer, it's autoimmune. Yeah, neuropathy at all is, yeah. It's autoimmune, right? And many people actually don't know this. Like they don't know that diabetes is autoimmune or that, mm -hmm. you know, arthritis is autoimmune. When you have these chronic longstanding debilitating diseases, you are not 
producing enough glutathione for your body to heal, repair, recover, regenerate, and restore itself. You're not. Period. Yeah. End of story. You Even are just if you ate all the good foods. Nothing. Yep. You took your supplements that had cruciferous vegetables. You still would not produce that, correct? Correct. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. So you know, if you follow kind of the timeline, many people are diagnosed with autoimmune. You know, starting 40, 50, even 60 years old, right? Yeah. And there, there's a couple of reasons for that. So number one, after the age of 20, so your body actually makes its own glutathione right? It's how your body heals itself. Glutathione is the master key to every cell in your body to actually give yourself cellular energy, but also to detoxify. When we give ourselves, um, after the age of 20, your body's capacity to manufacture glutathione actually decreases at a rate of 10 to 15% every decade. If you weren't stressed as a kid, if you didn't have abuse or trauma or molested or even have parents divorced or yeah. different bullying or different things like that. If, if you had a wonderful, perfect little childhood, then 20, I agree. You know, and here's the thing, like, you know, many people are like, well, yeah, but you know, why am I sick and no one else in my family is sick? I mean, we all did the same thing. Look, I have five siblings. I'm the only person in my family diagnosed with autoimmune disease, and I was diagnosed at 29 years of age. Did they all have four kids? Um, well, all, a mom? Yeah, pretty much. My oldest sister, you know, had three. My youngest sister, uh, six, right? And so um, my brother has three. You know, my other brother has three. So, um, yeah. They all had the same stress levels, like from childhood all the way up? Sure. We all, we all, you know, we all live together. So what made me different? Well, the difference is, you know, the way that we each interpret stress. Yeah. Right. The way that we respond to stress, uh, but also, you know, our body's capacity to detoxify. So for example, you know, um, in my teenage years, I worked in a restaurant and I wasn't putting on those disgusting gloves that other people were wearing that were wet inside. So I'm like in the bleach, washing the dishes, uh, absorbing bleach into my body. Then when I get married to save time, I'm in the shower in the morning Thank with you. the comet using my hands and my feet to scrub the, the tub in the shower. So I'm absorbing those toxins into myself. And in the lung. <laughs> right? Yeah, everything. So, you know, we are not our, you know, our siblings or our family. We we have our own, you know, um, I'll say our own issues. Yeah. And, you know, even though I would say, you know, I've always eaten a very healthy diet. I've never smoked, never really drank alcohol, grew all of our food in the garden, did as much home canning and preserving as possible, right? Not really going out, right? Um, so, you know, what was it for me? I don't know. Je ne sais quoi. It's one of those things. But I, what I will tell you is somehow along the line, my body was no longer able to keep up with the toxicity in my body, was no longer able to keep up with the glutathione in my body because I was constantly stressed and living in fight or flight panic mode. There was a couple of reasons for this starting at a very young age that my body was no longer able to produce the glutathione that it needed to heal. So my body started breaking down rapidly, right? So we can speed up our healing by actually consuming glutathione. But here's the problem. We've all been told, well, it doesn't work. Well, the reason we've been told that is because we've had a very inferior supplemental glutathione. You cannot get glutathione from food. Please do not believe that lie. You cannot eat food and get glutathione. You can eat food that gives you precursors that if your body is healthy enough and has nothing else to do, that it can produce the glutathione. But in autoimmune, which is what we're talking about, you know, you're, you're not able to produce. You can eat all the freaking broccoli and Brussels sprouts and kale that you want. You're not ever going to produce the amount of glutathione that you require in order for your body to heal and reverse course and come out of autoimmune. That is a guarantee. 
you must take it in on a supplemental way. And so historically, you know, uh, there's been some liposomals where you hold them under your tongue. The result with that was 28% absorption. So people really weren't getting well. I was sending patients for IV glutathione into the city. One clinic, you know, 150, another clinic, $300 per IV, and you need them like three times a week. It's craziness. People couldn't afford it. Right. Right. We spend our whole life, Jeannie, working so that we can retire and enjoy our life. But then people retire and they spend all of their money trying to regain their health. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in our world. Yeah. If they're willing, because a lot of people say that's too expensive, but health is wealth. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you know, I say that all the time. And so, you know, doing all this stuff with the diet and self-care, doing what you love. So whether that's dancing and we'll hear from Jeannie what her favorite is, um, that's going to be very helpful for you. But, you know, there's a new product out on the market, uh, new me, a glutathione, it's a hydrostat, which is a nano sized particle wrapped in water, which means it is goes in. Is this right here you're talking about? Wait. <laughs> it goes into your jugular within 30 seconds, and within 70 seconds, every cell in your body has it. With, there's a couple of things crucial about this. Um, the glutathione helps your body to detox. So if you're in chronic long-standing disease, whether that's chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, arthritis, cancer, MS, it doesn't really matter what it is. Yeah. Your yeah. body needs to detoxify and it needs the help doing it. But the glutathione also allows your mitochondria to function properly. So mitochondria are in every little cell and they produce cellular energy. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel alive. It makes you feel like you're full of vitality, right? And so when you have chronic long-standing disease, you don't feel alive. You feel like you're dragging all the time. Your body is heavy because you're full of garbage. You're full of toxins and poisons that need to come out. And your mitochondria aren't working because you don't have enough glutathione. Yeah. Right. And so we need it. And the, Interesting thing is you actually can't overdose on glutathione. Your body just needs it so much. And if you have chronic long-standing disease, you need more glutathione than the average person. And you definitely need more than what you're able to produce at 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 years old. And But also making sure, like when you're saying about can't overdose, like even making sure your lymphatic system is eliminating all those toxins. So if you're feeling bloated, you, you're getting constipated or whatnot, make sure to get that out. Rub some geranium essential oil on there. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water, um, you know, healthy fats, whatnot, to really get rid of that junk too. Because a lot of times it just, yeah, you get your, your body. So much of us are stagnant. And so yes. much of us have swelling swelling behind the the knees you can really tell if you have lymphatic stagnation there double chin will show if you have stagnation and lymphatic stagnation like all that is is showing okay so you use glutathione now what supplements do you use supplements and stuff too yes. like what kind of stuff do you use on that yeah and so obviously supplementation is more based on your actual need okay um and so People with um, autoimmune or chronic disease, they need digestive enzymes. That's number one, first and foremost. Understanding that number one, uh, people with autoimmune cannot digest uh, and assimilate fat properly. If we can't absorb good fats into our body, so first of all, many women are not eating them. And so let's be clear, eating good fat. I'm not talking about your poutine and your Doritos and your French fries, right? I'm talking about good fats, avocados, right? Nuts and seeds, eggs, um, olive oil, coconut oil, good fats, fish. If you can't eat them and absorb them, uh, your body freaks out. But if you don't have glutathione, your liver actually can't produce bile. If you can't produce bile because your liver is not making it or you've had your gallbladder, your storage vessel removed and you're not able to store it, you can't digest the fat. When you can't digest the fat, you cannot balance your hormones. 
See, it all links to that loving on your liver, man. It's so glutathione liver. Like that is so everything, like everything from yeah. yes, hormones, diabetes, neuropathy, all diseases. That's it. Okay. So go on about yeah. that. And I so generally, that. yeah, most people need a, a complete digestive. They need something for protein and fat and carbohydrates. They need, it's not just enough to have hydrochloric acid. It's also not enough to have ases. So these pre-digestive enzymes, these plant enzymes, people with autoimmune need big time digestive help. So digestive enzymes are always one of them, always a methylated B complex. So again, there's a fatigue factor. The liver is not either methylating the Bs or you have because of the autoimmune, very likely an MTHFR deficiency. This is a genetic deficiency where you can't make use of your B vitamins properly. Okay, but I'm I'm thinking, you know, they used to say, oh, that's almost like the alien gene or what whatnot. But I think a lot more people are having this MTHR because we're not, yes. So yeah. And so there's always an assumption. So number one, even if you don't have that genetic deficiency. There is no problems taking the methylated Bs. It makes it easier for your body, actually. So it, it, think of decreasing the workload on your liver, right? So you can just take the methylated Bs. Um, magnesium. Uh, <laughs> magnesium is huge for autoimmune disease. So because in autoimmune disease, your body is actually acidic right? Number one, you're eating all those acid forming foods. You're eating all the grains, the meats, the dairy, the sugar, the caffeine, you're forming acid in your body. So your body's actually stealing your alkaline minerals, calcium, magnesium out of your bones and tissues to stabilize the pH so that, you know, your heart, your brain, your liver, you know, kidneys can actually function. So the magnesium is often very deficient in chronic um, autoimmune disease or chronic degenerative disease. So taking a really good magnesium bicalcinate, 300 milligrams um, at either supper or at bedtime is very helpful. It's very calming. It's relaxing. It helps your bowels to work better um, and helps with uh, supporting a good night's sleep. So those are um, probably very crucial then you can always look at your fish oils. So if you're not consuming fish, it's highly encouraged to take some type of a high quality fish okay. oil. Because you were also talking about, you know, to even help eliminate meats where there's a lot of good healthy uh, fats in certain meats, especially the organic meats. Um, Cause I'm not a soy person whatsoever. I'm no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had lots of buddies even, you know, years ago that even their doctor, when they got breast cancer, they said, avoid the soy, you know, in their bars and they were very healthy. They would work out. They, they did really good on, they were really in check. And so they were devastated that their doctor would say, don't eat the soy because you know, of different things. But so you're recommending for your proteins and stuff, your eggs, your salmon, good, healthy fish, you know, um, wild caught fish, that kind of stuff. You can also get plant proteins like chia seed, for example, uh, is very high in protein. So mm -hmm. avoiding meat is not completely necessary. However, understanding that if you're eating high uh, quantities of animal products, you're driving your acidity through the roof, especially if you're not getting it properly sourced. Uh, if you're buying your meat at Walmart, stop, stop it right now. This is very, very poor quality meat. It's full of antibiotics. It's full of hormones. It, it's, it's not cool. Like, please. Um, it's more important for you to stop the grains, the dairy, the sugar than it is the meat, but everything in moderation. Right. And so um, you know, most women actually don't consume enough protein. That's part of the challenge with uh, them actually having energy and regulating blood sugars. They're not consuming enough protein and they're not consuming enough fat. They're, you know, eating this, you know, pigeon diet, pecking on, you know, lettuce and then wondering why they don't feel good. Yeah. Right. So we, we have to look at it a little bit deeper than that. It's not about 
restricting calories. Ladies, once you're over the age of 40, um, extreme caloric restriction and cardiovascular exercise to try and lose weight doesn't work. This is not um, how a female body works after the age of 40. You know, you can go and run for 10 hours a day. All that's going to happen is your metabolism going to slow down, right? So there's very specific things that happen with a, a woman's body as we're entering into uh, menopause season, right? Your body actually wants to gain weight because it's storing estrogen in your cellulite, in your fat cells, so that you actually have um, a really good... Um, you know, rest uh, 40, 50 years to your life. And so, you know, yes, Melissa, Walmart say some without antibiotics. Uh, perhaps uh, all that that really means, generally speaking, is that within 30 days of slaughter, they didn't have antibiotics. So just FYI. Also, uh, Walmart in Canada is importing, I believe, most of their meat from the U.S. And the U.S. does not have the same restrictions in raising their livestock as we do in Canada. So in Canada, we have huge restrictions on hormones and antibiotics. It's not allowed. You actually have to have a vet authorized to give antibiotics to your animal. They have to be clear for 30 days from antibiotics before they're allowed to be, you know, their milk is allowed to be back into the pool before they're allowed to be slaughtered. This isn't the case um, in the U.S. It's very important that you're looking for high quality sourcing from a local farmer, going to a farmer's market, right? Um, many local farmers, they're not certifying their meat as organic because that's a pretty big deal. But it's organic meat and they, they'll show you their operation. They'll show you how they're loving on those animals. If you have an animal that's being abused and in a high stress um, environment, um, you know, they're going to be reducing high levels of cortisol and that cortisol is going to be in your meat, which means that you're consuming meat that's, you know, um, not good. The meat is very toxic. It's even more acidic um, than usual, right? And so be very careful. I'm not saying don't eat meat. I eat meat all the time, but I also raise my own chickens. I raise my own turkeys and I source my beef from local farmers that I know what they're doing with their animals. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's awesome. No, I, okay. So going back to the supplements, because I mean, I have my supplement that has my cruciferous vegetables, my fish that I know has good quality fish oil for omega-3, um, 9, 6 fatty acids for heart health, brain health and stuff like that. And the vitamin B, like you were saying as well. And of course, my magnesium. What else? What else would you recommend? Well, of course, we've got our glutathione, you know, yeah. two teaspoons. Uh, you know, for me, usually twice a day, sometimes three times a day, however I'm feeling. Um, what no, wait, I had to take glutathione like in the beginning more, like I had to do it every waking hour the first day. And then no. I did, backed it off maybe every two hours because my supplements weren't working like they used to. My immune system was broken down. Um, I was feeling fatigued. My hair was not doing what it was supposed to be doing anymore. Like, so I was depleted. I am you know, carry my stress in my belly and on my shoulders. And I take everyone's stress upon myself or I used to. Um, so honestly, I needed to take it every hour and, and really, yeah, flood my body with it. So I know you take it a couple of times a day, but I needed way more because I wasn't eating right. You know, I mean, having my sugar and my, my carbs and, and um, not eating my healthy fats, especially the last several months and stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, many people need a huge loading dose of glutathione to actually press that reset button. Right. And, um, you know, some people taking glutathione, if they're you know more or less in a state of health or what we call um, it's not homeostasis. Please understand that that is really the wrong term. Homeostasis means, you know, to keep in a static state of balance. Your body is not in a static state. It's homeodynamics. We are looking for your body to be in this constant 
um, you know, uh, flow where we're entering through all of our cycles. Everything in our body is a cycle, our sleep-wake cycle, right? Our energy cycle, our hormonal cycle. It's always in these highs and lows. In fact, your body naturally should go through what's called a pro-inflammatory state and then an anti-inflammatory state. If you but, can't very, but very slight, because I, I really do believe that we... I'm always like fight, flight, whatever. And that homeostasis inside and out, I really want to start. And yes, that doesn't mean stagnant. It means, you know, getting up and down, but to try to get rebalanced to where I need to be. So I'm not, yeah. you know, creating, you know, cortisol up the yin yang and whatnot. So, yeah. Well, the problem is, is, you know, people with autoimmune are stuck in that pro inflammatory state. They can't get out of it. There is just inflammation all the time that's being driven by cortisol because they're in fight or flight, because they are stressed yeah. all the time. So, you know, decreasing that. So do you need some type of a supplement like SAMe, uh, which is um, calming, or do you need GABA? So doTERRA has a fantastic product called Serenity Soft Gels that not only have uh, calming essential oils, but also have GABA in it and GABA is a hormone that's produced by the brain um, to create a sense of calm or balance, right? And so if you're feeling a bit wired and you know every morning you're kind of like, oh, I've got so much to do, um, well, that's going to be you know uh, fantastic. If you take that um, Serenity Soft Gels from doTERRA to give you that little balance or the adaptive exactly. soft gels to help you um, balance that out. So um, some of the other things I take, of course, are uh, vitamin C. So I do about 6,000 um, or milligrams of vitamin C a day or more. Uh, vitamin D3, crucial. What vitamin C do you take? I don't... Um... There, there's a lot of vitamin C's available. The interesting thing about vitamin C is it's one of the only nutrients that whether it's uh, synthetically made or extracted from a plant, chemically it's exactly the same. It's just one of those weird nutrients. You don't need to spend a ton of money on vitamin C um, unless you have, you know, um, a cancer state or autoimmune where, you know, there's some other things going on. You can actually buy like an alkaline vitamin C to help bring down the acid levels um, in your body. Um, doesn't like the glutathione also help with your vitamin C and E and helps to, to yes. recycle that and enhance it even more. Yeah. And so vitamin C is kind of cool because it helps your body spare the glutathione using the glutathione for more serious things like actually getting you out of autoimmune instead of, oh, I cut my finger. But it also recycles vitamin C and you get this kind of other run off of the vitamin C. Vitamin D3 is crucial. So uh, I take anywhere from six to 20,000 international units a day. Vitamin D and vitamin C are both massive anti-inflammatories, uh, very healing, very nurturing um, in the body. Um, what else? Most of my other supplements would be very, um, I'll say personalized. Uh, so some, some zinc in there, some quercetin. Um, I also do a joint support, which is really great. Um, and then also something uh, with carnitine in it. So um, L-carnitine helps support muscle and tissue repair, um, as well as fat metabolism. So um, I'm using the carnitine is also um, one of those essential components uh, for, for glutathione. But, you know, I'm in the season of, you know, uh, the nifty 50. I'm going to be fit, fabulous, and financially free uh, in my 50th uh, celebration year. Yes, and so we both are. Right? Of the century, man. <laughs> so, well, wait. Yeah. The L um, car, car, car name, or whatever. Is that also in the Mito 2 Max then as well, right? I think so. Oh, yeah, this there. is. Yeah, this is a therapeutic dose, so probably um, okay. much much higher. Now, um, okay, so if our liver is not digesting even uh, supplement supplements, so do, like I even believe too, you know, to go back, let's start heal up our liver enzymes. Yes, taking 
the necessary stuff that we need to take every single day and start healing that up so we can absorb this stuff. Otherwise, I think we're just taxing on more and more. I mean, I used to be one taking a bazillion supplements all day long and stuff. Um, but to go back to really heal my liver, to really to be able to absorb what I really need to do. So I'm not just wasting hundreds of dollars every single month, you know. Well, and, you know, here's the other thing, and I think you mentioned it a few minutes ago, where you could take the best supplements in the world, but part of the reason why they don't work or you're feeling like you're not getting as good of a bang for your buck is because you don't have the glutathione. The glutathione actually tells every nutrient where to go in the body. Yeah. Your vitamin D, your fish oils, your vitamin C, your zinc. If you don't have the glutathione, you literally are wasting your money on supplements. It, it, it's just one of those things. So, you know, it, it comes down to the glutathione because your body actually needs it. You know, it's not just that you're over the age of 20 and that you have an autoimmune disease, but there's all kinds of things that you've done throughout your life, alcohol, uh, medications, uh, poor nutrient choices. So these nutrient dead foods right. that you're eating, the stress, um, the toxicity from the environment, from your shower, from your cleaning products, um, they deplete glutathione in your body. When you get drunk, you've like wiped out the glutathione in your body. So if you're over the age of, you know, 29, right, your capacity to rebuild that is not so good. And if you tack on that autoimmune disease on top of that, it's why you're not getting better. The reason that your, your medical system is going to tell you you can't heal from autoimmune disease is because people won't do what it takes. They won't change their diet. They won't get eight or nine hours of sleep every night. They won't drink the water. They won't uh, decrease their the stress load. Yeah. yeah. They won't change yeah, the chemicals that you use in the home, the shampoo, the conditioner, the body wash, the facial stuff, this instead of perfumes, making their own, removing all those chemicals, including our laundry and our dish soap needs to be a must. So then our body can work how it needs to work. So it's not just the food. It definitely, like you said, it's also the chemicals that we're using every day, not just consuming. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things I, you know, it's so important to mention is that health is not the absence of symptoms, right? So Say that if you, time, health is not the absence yes. of symptoms. Yeah, because many people think that they're healthy because they haven't been diagnosed with a disease, right? Yeah. Or because they're taking a medication that makes the brain feel like there's nothing going on. So the you you take your Celebrex and there's no pain right? The pain is still there. And we know this because when you stop taking it, guess what happens? Hello, the pain is right there. Yeah. Right. So please stop fooling yourself because you didn't develop cancer or MS or diabetes or, you know, arthritis overnight. It's been a longstanding process of breaking down in your body that's been accelerated by stress, poor dietary choices and toxic uh, chemicals in our food, in our environment, in our air. And so, you know, such a, we're out of time. It's a fantastic topic. Oh and so God. we're going to pick it up again next week, but I want to leave you kind of with this last thought. If you're trying to lose weight, you are focusing on the wrong thing. Well, heal up the liver. <laughs> to heal up yourself. I'm doing that, man. This is all about the liver. <laughs> it's all about the liver, but pay attention to this because many women right now, they're in panic mode, right? Because spring is coming. They're not sure whether their shorts are going to fit, whether their bathing suit's going to fit. And so they're frantically trying to lose weight. But if you're trying to lose weight, it's the wrong focus. The focus is I'm trying to be vital. I'm trying to be healthy. When you enter into health, when you enter into vitality, the yeah. weight loss will be a, a beautiful byproduct. Now, this well, doesn't mean really the, the fat cells. We're shrinking the fat cells so that we have less toxins in our fat cells in order. Yes. But movement is important. Strengthening muscles. Yes. Movement is very important. 
but killing yourself with cardiovascular is not going to give you the results over the age of 40 that it would have at the age of 35 or, or 28, right? So just please understand that if all you are worried about is losing weight, it's wrong because yeah. you can be skinny and very unhealthy, yeah. very unhealthy. So I'll, I'll put this uh, in again. So Numi Nutra Swish. It detoxifies your fat cells. Hello? The cellulite actually shrinks because it's sucking out all the garbage out of them. Yeah. Right? And I have Konicus cupping that will help the lymphatic system even move more. Right? And so we'll post the link uh, to Jeannie's website where you can learn more about the Konicus, the cupping, and specifics to do. We'll post the links uh, for the NUMI as well. Um, and so please, um, you know, make sure that you're going to use an affiliate link, either mine or Jeannie's, because, um, yeah, we love you and we want to support you on your health and wellness journey. So fantastic conversation today. Uh, love it so much. As you can tell, this is my jam uh, because I believe that women, we can be healthy, we can be vital, we can be strong, we can be passionate um, every day of our lives. And we don't have to take a diagnosis um, and roll over and play dead. And you better believe we will post this. Um, absolutely. So we always like to close in prayer. And before you know, we go, please remember, Jeannie and I, we're going to pick this up next Wednesday. So Kitchen Table happens every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And we're so excited to be partnering with you and, you know, uh, blessing you uh, with our wisdom and knowledge. Um, it, it's it's just such an honor. So thank you for allowing us to be uh, in your kitchens, having a cup of coffee or tea or drinking water with you, just as we would in the good old days with all of the girls together. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak life and blessing into every woman. Father, would you inspire them, encourage them? Would you flood them with the dream that you have for their life, um, for their health, for their vitality? And just, you know, that every woman would know that she's absolutely beautiful inside or out. That, Father, that today she would look in the mirror and see the beauty that she is in all that she is, the beauty of her heart, her soul, and her spirit. We just thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm.